Hi, this is Rex, and you're watching the Brick Ninjas. The first pressing of the book, Metallica, Back to the Front, arrived in my mailbox yesterday. The almost 300-page book is a revealing memoir of Metallica during the writing and recording of their third album, Master of Puppets, and the subsequent tour to follow, Damage Incorporated. It begins with a foreword by James Hetfield and continues with a detailed account of the tragic bus accident that left musical juggernaut Cliff Burton dead. The book is extremely well written and handles the traumatic events around Cliff's passing delicately while still providing new information. The book centers on Cliff Burton's genius, unique story and influence within the band and the creation of Master of Puppets, while capturing the headspace the band were in from every possible angle at the time. Every page is full-color semi-gloss paper packed with pictures of all the people in the Metallica family from 1984 to 1986. There are photos of everyone that spent any meaningful time with the band during that period. To name a few, Peter Mensch, Mark Whitaker, Fleming Rasmussen, of course, James, Cliff, Lars, Kirk, and Jason, but there are even photos of Kirk's sister, Cliff's girlfriend, and photos of other family and friends. And also, just photos of the guys being themselves in and around San Francisco and the Bay Area or touring. The book is filled with anecdotal tales of all the goings on of that time period from the band members and close friends. Lars and James driving around LA to search for a studio to record the album. There's another story where James has to apologize to management because he shoved a bunch of fruit and other items through a fan vent on a trailer at a very important tour date. Uh, there's other stories where Lars is soaking up fame and Kirk first being recognized in public as a celebrity. Some of the photos I found very cool were rare shots of Cliff playing the Aurora 2 Pro bass, or there was some I thought I really liked where James was playing a Jackson King V. This is a rare sight for sure, as in 1985, James was searching to replace his Gibson V after it had taken a lot of abuse on the previous tours. So he purchased a Jackson V, but found that it just wasn't as comfortable as his Gibson Explorer and decided to stick with that instead. But there are shots of him playing this on tour. And I just find it very interesting because that's a guitar that was made famous by Dave Mustaine from the band Megadeth. And if you know any history about Metallica, Dave Mustaine was one of the founding members of Metallica before he was forced to leave after a lot of questionable activity. Anyways, after seeing pictures of James playing this Jackson King V, it reminded me of a video I saw on the making of Hardwired to Self-Destruct, where James looks like he pulled that guitar back out because of all the interviews and the stuff going on with his book may have got him back into the headspace of Master of Puppets and he decided to pull that guitar back out and maybe record a couple parts for the new album. So I found that pretty cool and interesting. Now I have to say that I found this book incredible. It's just full of stories and anecdotes and photos from that time period and really, really opens up uh, the world that Metallica were in at that time and all the success they achieved and going from basically being poor and broke to hitting stardom and how that affected them. I really recommend that any real diehard fan of Master of Puppets and Cliff Burton especially get this book because you're gonna learn a lot about the band from this and all the things that were going on. And it's just, it's almost like a time machine. You're going back in time, you're just, you're looking at all this stuff. I like the stories about the Metallica Mansion and what Cliff was up to. Here's the book. I think it's huge, it's like, Top quality, like this feels like a textbook that you would get at school when you're a kid. Um, it's when I read it, I often feel like I have to like I gotta hug it just to hold it because um, I don't want it to bend or break or get any anything messed up. I do feel that it's so it's it's I mean it's really high quality that I feel like when I'm holding it, if I just hold it with a hand, that I could easily like do something like <laughs> you just saw me do, and I could tear some of it or the pages could get a little the binding could get loose on the back there. Um, I mean, it's, it's a huge, high-quality book. It's like a coffee table book, but it's, uh, it's really fun to read. There's so much stuff in there from, um, there's so much stuff in there from like the tour, um, the making of the album. There's a cool picture in the back with the, all four guys holding the actual backdrop from the uh, Master of Puppets tour. They talk about Ozzy, um, Cliff, and how influential he was and how they met him. They talk about uh, his, his memorial service. They talk to his friends. They talk to friends of Metallica and just all the stuff that... Um, there's all these stories about how poor and broke they were. There's a funny one where I guess James fell asleep on a park bench and he used to dress 
with ripped up jeans and t-shirts and he woke up with a news crew and a microphone in front of him, in front of him saying, um, oh, we're here doing a documentary on uh, the homeless of San Francisco. We have some questions. And he's like, I'm not homeless. And they're like, oh, it's okay. You know, you don't have to be in denial. We, we, it's all right. And he had to, like, get up and run away from them. And I just get this picture of James running for this, like, lady with a microphone chasing him. Oh, tell us some more about being homeless, um, <laughs> which is kind of funny. One of the things about them being so poor is they, I mean, they talked to Scott Ian, and I guess um, during the creation of Kill 'Em All, they talk about that briefly, um, how just how poor they were, and how the um, Johnny Zazula or Johnny Z as they called him, put them up in this um, rehearsal space up in New York, and they had like they had no money, they couldn't even like take showers in this building, they had to sleep there, and. Scott Ian said that he felt so bad for them that he brought them a toaster because Cliff Burton had this pack of hot dogs, these, these pre-cooked Oscar Mayer hot dogs, and he would just eat them cold. But he felt so bad they brought him a toaster so he could at least have a hot hot dog while they were living in that space. It was really cool to see like just all the stories of how hard these guys had to fight to be successful and how driven they had to be and finally reached that point with Master of Puppets. It's also kind of sad because you realize just how influential Cliff Burton was to that success um, and how much those guys really, really missed him and how much it hurt when he passed away. Um, I've always been a big Metallica fan. Like I said in an, er an earlier video, I love those first five albums the most. Um, I'm excited for Hardwired. Uh, but this book really shed even more light that I've always wondered, like, what was Sweet Silent Studios like? Um, what was it like working with Cliff? Was it, were they really poor back then? Um, why did they choose Copenhagen? Why don't they just stay in the States and record? I mean, all those, all those things are answered in this book and more. Um, so I highly recommend you check it out. If you're a fan of Master of Puppets and Cliff Burton, this is, this is the book to have. And it's totally worth the 40 bucks I paid for it. Anyways, let me know what you think. Did you like this book? Do you own this book? Do you want to get this book now? Um, let me know in the comments what you think, if you've already purchased it, if you, if I've, if you want to purchase it now, um, or you think that my review of it sucks, whatever. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.